Hello and welcome to Glendale Today. I'm Mayor Jerry Wires. On this episode of Glendale Today, I'd like to take the opportunity to share with you an organization and a cause that's very important to me, which is the Shriners, and the work they do to help children in need. With me today, I have Ed Stoltz from the local El Zareba Shriners, who will share with us the history of the organization, who the Shriners are, and how they serve our community. Thank you, Ed, for being here today. Let's begin with sharing the od with the audience the history of the Shriners organization. Ed, can, uh, can you tell us who the Shriners are? Thank you, Mayor. The Shriners are a group of Freemasons. Uh, it started approximately 1870 in a group of 12 men in the Knickerbocker Cottage in New York City. Um, they gathered on a regular basis, and around 1870 they decided they wanted to start an organization that revolved around or centered around fun and fellowship instead of ritual. So in 1872 they had their first meeting as Shriners of North America at that time which is now known as Shriners International. And for these folks uh, watching that aren't familiar with Masonic Order, can you uh, tell us uh, what the relationship is between the Masons and being a Shriner? Freemasonry is one of the oldest and longest standing fraternities in the world. It started centuries ago with stone masons and craft masons who would gather in what was referred to as lodges or houses for meetings. That evolved around um, meetings and instead of talking about masonry and their craft, they actually centered around f the fraternity itself. Um, that started Freemasons around the world. Uh, there's currently over eight million Freemasons around the world. Um, some of those are Shriners. Uh, all Shriners are Masons, but not, not all Masons are Shriners. And how many local Shrine organizations are there? There are currently two Shrine organizations here in Arizona, but there's 195 Shrine centers across the world. They're in Germany, U.S., Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Republic of Panama, and Philippines. Wow. Uh, later in the show, we will talk specifically about uh, the local shrine organization uh, that we are members of. But generally speaking, uh, how does one become a shriner? Uh, once you become a Freemason or a Master Mason, in masonry you go through several degrees. Uh, once you become a third degree or Master Mason, um, then you can request to become a Shriner. And, and now, now that we've <coughs> talked a little bit about the Freemasons, uh, which are a fraternal organization, so women can be Shriners as well? Uh, although Shriners International is known as a men's fraternity, all of our families and spouses are fully involved with everything we do as Shriners. There's also two organizations within the Shrine um, that are specifically for women, uh, Ladies of the Oriental Shrine, and Daughters of the Nile. And the only pre current prerequisite for that is if you have a relative through birth, adoption, um, any relative, any distant relative that is either a Mason or a Shriner, uh, a lady can apply to become a Ladies Oriental Shrine or a Daughters of the Nile. Hmm. Uh, can you share with us some benefits of being a Shriner uh, and, and why would someone want to become a Shriner? The biggest privilege of being a Shriner is the support of our philanthropy, which we call the greatest philanthropy in the world, and that's Shriners Hospitals for Children. Outside of that, we do involve our families, our ladies and spouses uh, in different events, different fr fraternal events, as well as civic and community events. Well, I'm glad you brought up the Shriners Hospitals, uh, as that is really uh, at the core of what we do as Shriners. And uh, we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail, but uh, I have just one more question about some of the symbols that uh, folks may identify with the Shriners. Uh, that I wanted to ask you about. For many people, they identify the Shriners with that little red hat. Can you tell us about that little red hat? And there it is. The little red hat, or otherwise what is known as a fez, uh, was adopted by Shriners Headquarters or Shriners International in 1872. Uh, the two individuals who started the Shrine, one was a, a doctor and the other one was a actor playwright. The actor playwright had just come back from uh, northern Africa, Morocco to be exact, um, doing a play. And while he was there he saw the Fez, which is the representative hat of Fez Morocco. Uh, and it, so it was actually adopted as part of our ritual and part of our uh, outfit. Most importantly, it's our advertising tool. This is what we we wear to all events, to all meetings, uh, to all civic and community events. Uh, and it represents not only Shriners International and Shriners Hospitals for Children, but as you can see, it also represents uh, certain positions within the Shrine uh, or the organization. Um, the potentate or the 
uh, chairman of the board of every local shrine center is known as the potentate. Uh, and this is the potentate's fez right here. Basically the, the, the mayor of the shrine or is that particular? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct.